You guys smell that? It smells like football season's right around the corner, guys. And I can't wait because training camp is about a week away for the Carolina Panthers. And you got to give Marty Herney credit for all the work that he's put in this offseason. Um, and if you're a Panthers fan, you got to be excited because if you look at the roster up and down, the Panthers either maintained or got better at pretty much every position on the team and did what they needed to do. However, there's still a couple positions up for grabs though. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the top three position battles to pay attention to during Carolina Panthers training camp that could be key to the 2019 season. We're starting right now. What up, dude? What's up, everybody? It's Aaron Duncan here with the Necessary Blunt and Sports Talk. This is the channel where I might not tell you what you want to hear, but I'm definitely going to tell you what you need to hear. And I give recap and analysis of the NFC South. So if you want to see more videos about the Panthers, the Bucks, the Saints, and the Falcons, make sure you hit the subscribe button below, guys, because I'm, I'm, I'm everybody's favorite YouTuber. And I'm going to keep bringing this heat, and you want to stay up to date. So make sure you hit that bell icon, and make sure you give the video a thumbs up also. Hey, real quick, let me know down below in the comments. What position battles are you looking forward to the most? Is it backup quarterback? Uh, is it any kind of linebacker, pass rusher, um, the secondary? Let me know down below in the comments. The first position battle we're going to talk about is the offensive line unit as a whole. So if you're a Panthers fan, you know for most of Cam Newton's tenure, the offensive line that he's had in front of him has been pretty suspect to say the least. I mean, let's just be real, guys. They've had more holes than Swiss cheese up front, and it's taking a toll on Cam as his career has gone by. However, this year it looks like Marty Hearn is putting the work to make sure we're going to have some decent depth and some pretty good guys up front altogether. That extra depth on the offensive line is going to pay dividends, especially if you look back at last year when we lost three offensive linemen for the season during training camp, not to mention Darrell Williams after the first game. However, at the end of a storm, there's always a rainbow. We found some bright spots on the offensive line, like Greg Van Roten actually stepping up and bringing a pretty good player at left guard. Also finding out what we really had in Taylor Moten as he got to show his versatility playing the left side and the right side. And you know the Panthers love those swing linemen that can play multiple positions up front just in case guys get injured because they save roster spots. One of the biggest questions we have is who's going to play tackle with Taylor Moten stepping up and having a huge year last year and the former All-Pro Darrell Williams coming back from his leg injury this year also. To add a little bit of fire to that flame of that battle, Greg Little was drafted in the second round, and he's considered one of the best linemen coming into college last year uh, before that season started. And it looks like the projection might be uh, Greg Little, if he can step up and be an immediate starter, go to left tackle, Taylor Moten at right tackle, and throw Darrell Williams in there at left guard. So it'll be interesting to see how things play out, because I think they're going to give Greg Little every position to start that Start at left tackle, but we'll see. I mean, Greg Van Roten, he was pretty solid. He may be a solid backup to play. Who knows? But he's going to be vying for that left guard spot too with Daryl because Daryl, nothing's guaranteed. He hasn't played guard in a while, I guess probably since college, and uh, he's coming off an injury. So there's some question marks about him, but he's in the contract year. I expect him to step up. However, I understand because if they had any doubts about Daryl Williams losing the step, it's a good thing that they put him inside that guard. That way there's a guy to the left of him and to the right of him. Instead of him being on the edges, having to deal with speed rushes when footwork and quickness are a big key. So the second position battle on the team is at nickelback. I know they always say that uh, the injuries happen and stuff like that, but losing Ross Cockrell in training camp was a big factor for us. He was a pretty decent rank free agent at corner, one of the better zone corners in the league by pro football focus coming in to last year, but he had the nasty knee injury, and it kind of threw a wrench in everything. However, we had no idea, at least I didn't, that Dante Jackson would step up and be one of the best playmakers in our secondary. I know he's from LSU and that's DBU, but I knew he was undersized and uh, fast, so I figured they would play him at nickel last year just because he has that matchup, he has that toughness and that athleticism to keep up with those quick guys when they have two-way goals playing that slot receiver. So now with Ross Cockrell recovering, it actually sounds like that he'll be competing for that nickel back position. And let's not forget about our fifth-round pick from the U, Corin Elder, who had a rough going last year, some growing pains. Of course, he got thrown in against the Seahawks when Dante Jackson got hurt to play the outside corner, and he was quickly exposed by Russell Wilson. Most people think the nickelback is his natural position anyway, so we'll see what happens there. So the nickelback position is wide open now with the team moving on from Captain Merlin. So uh, Ross Cockrell, he's the vet in the scenario. Like I said, he was highly rated coming before he came to the team. However, he's coming off a gruesome leg injury. You never know how Ross Cockrell is going to come back mentally or physically. Mentally, just because when you have a nasty injury like that, you may start to pay attention to it or fair favoring it or kind of being a little bit more passive when it comes to stuff like that. Hopefully not, but also physically because he probably has a metal rod in his leg of some sort. So that's the question marks on him. And Corn Elder, we saw him get torched last year in a limited position, uh, limited playing time, excuse me, that he got. But the question about him is, 
Will he grow enough over another offseason in order to show that he can actually be that guy in a full-time scenario? But also the note is the Panthers actually hired a former Tampa Bay Buck and Javon Elliott. I don't know too much about the guy. I know he had his only career pick, I guess, against Cam Newton in that Bucks game. But who else, who didn't Cam throw a pick to in that game? But anyway, we'll see if he'll be able to compete. Of course, he'll probably have a chance to make the team and be on the roster and compete for playing time too because, hey, more competition the better. The third position battle is backup quarterback. So I know Cam Newton gets a lot of flack about his style of play not being sustainable for the future and that he'll break down and blah, 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 blah. However, in his nine-year career and 128 possible games that he's been a Panther, he's only missed five of those guys. However, with this shoulder injury, that makes the backup position that much more crucial because you never know how Cam is going to be coming out. And with the amount of talent and time and money that we put into this roster, this present offseason, you want a backup that can at least ride the wave and uh, this team it's a pretty good roster so you just want a quarterback that can actually compete and be able to make plays when they're called upon in those limited opportunities so the Panthers played both Taylor Heineke and Kyle Allen last year towards the end of the season once they shut Cam Newton down Taylor Heineke he had a pretty good showing in his first start however we saw the freakish uh, arm injury that he had to his elbow or whatever and then Kyle Allen actually got a victory over the Saints in the final game of the season whether you want to call it against his backups or not he played against the starters for a decent amount of that game. So let's get that clear. However, the Panthers still decided to draft Will Greer out of West Virginia in the third round. This is funny because they showed a little bit of promise from the backups last year. Most teams only carry two quarterbacks on their active roster, including the starters. So drafting Will Greer is a big sign that he has a good chance of probably making the team, or if not, he'll practice squad for a year and then make the team next year if not. But a lot of people were high on him coming into this draft and thought that he might have been one of the best, if not the best, quarterback in this draft. And the Panthers drafted him at pick 100. And with Cam Newton being out for a lot of the offseason activities, all three guys have been said to have impressed this offseason. Of course, North Turner, he really likes Will Greer. He went to a lot of his pro day stuff. Will Greer is his guy. However, Taylor Heineke has experience in North system from when he played with him in Minnesota a little bit. And Kyle, like I said, he's still young and he shows some promise there. So he's going to be vying for his chance too. Although Will Greer is only a rookie, I'm very, very, very anxious to see what he can do in the preseason. You know, he's old. He stayed in college for a while. He transferred from Florida because of the performance enhancing drugs and steroid stuff. I don't know. But I'm anxious to see what this guy has. I like the way he played. In college, I like the system that he was in, the wide open thing system. He can sling the ball around. So I'm anxious to see what he does against preseason against some other younger guys. I honestly think that he'll end up winning that position probably just because they spent so much of a high pick on him. He has to work, you know, so it is what it is. But you guys let me know what other position battles I may be missing that you think I should be saying something about. And is it pass rusher? Is it kicker again, I guess, with Graham? Uh, we were going to bring in another young guy. Let me know in the other position battles. And let me know who you think are going to win the three battles that we talked about today. But without further ado, I'm signing off. I'm Aaron Duncan with the Necessary Blunt and Sports Talk. I'll see you next time.